Hey everybody, Mike here from DIY Aqua Pros. Today we're going to show you how to make your own internal fluidized bed filter using the new K1 Micro Media. Now this is a simple and inexpensive filter project that also happens to provide one of the most efficient forms of filtration, great for those with a high fish load. Let's start the build. Okay guys, for this project you're going to need the basics, an air pump of decent strength and a clear plastic water bottle. The pump doesn't have to be super strong, but try and get your hands on one capable of pushing between 3-9 to nine liters of air per minute, although you'll find even weaker pumps can provide enough air to drive a smaller size filter like the one we're about to make. It all depends on the amount and how compact the media is, as well as if it's cycled or not, but more on that later. My take here is that it's always worth it to invest in a powerful multi-valve and adjustable air pump. If you're looking for a super quiet air pump for projects like this, the one that I'm using isn't for you. However, I will post a link in the description for an excellent and pretty much silent pump that I've used in the past. As far as the bottle goes, I'm using of course the 17 ounce clear plastic bottle that I always make these types of projects with. If you require a larger filter, simply use a larger bottle, but I recommend sticking with one that lacks any curvature. The bottle that I'm using will allow more than enough media to filter a well-stocked 20 gallon tank. You're also going to need several feet of airline or vinyl tubing and a check valve if you're paranoid about siphoning. To provide some mechanical filtration prior to the fluidized biological portion of our filter, I'm going to use a small chunk of filter sponge that I pre-cut and made a cavity in that's just big enough to fit over the mouthpiece of the bottle without falling off. To attach the filter to the wall of our aquarium, I'm using a few random suction cups that I found in my stash of aquarium gear. They most likely came from an old heater. They're going to work great because they'll just pop into place once we have a spot for them. Grab a pen, your drill, and a quarter inch drill bit and you're all ready to go. Like I said earlier in this video, I'm using the new K1 Micro Media that the Pond Guru was nice enough to send me. It's got almost twice the service area per volume when compared to regular K1, meaning that you can get away with the filter almost half the size and still have the same capacity for biological filtration. If you're interested in the media and want to help support a fellow YouTube fish keeper, check out Richard's channel and head to his eBay store where you can find this stuff for sale. Links in the description. Okay, now let's start this project. Begin by drilling out a number of small holes on the bottom portion of the bottle. There's no real requirement here, I'm choosing to make 5 holes that are evenly spaced out with that quarter inch drill bit. Then mark and drill out 2 holes on the side of the bottle, keep them more than a few inches apart as this is where we'll pop the suction cups in that will hold the filter to the aquarium wall. The size of these holes will depend on what type of suction cup you're using and you can get away with using a bunch of different types, so this part is up to you. Drill one more hole near the neck of the bottle. This is where we'll insert the air line, so make sure to keep it about a quarter inch or so. If you make this hole the perfect size, there's no need for any silicone to hold in place although you always have that option. Once that's done, we're going to fill the bottle up a little over two-thirds of the way with our K1 Micro Media. In this case, it ends up being close to about half a liter's worth. I found that most bottles out there work pretty good with this ratio of media to volume, but it's also going to depend on a few factors like airflow and bacteria load. Now we're going to attach the filter sponge to the bottle so that the media doesn't fall out when we plug in the airline through the hole that we just made for it. Your internal fluidized bed filter is now complete, so let's go hook it up to a tank, talk about how it works, and also discuss pre-cycling the media. Once you've picked out a good spot for your filter and have it attached, fire up your air pump to start cycling that media. Fluidized or moving bed filter systems can be super efficient for several reasons. One, the constant bumping and circulation of the media will promote the growth of only living bacteria that are capable of attaching to the internal protected portion of the media. Two, the added air supply will greatly enhance the overall growth as well as the ammonia and nitrite oxidizing potential of the nitrifying bacteria making a home in the filter. Because this K1 media is close to having a neutral buoyancy, it will naturally want to tumble throughout the filter. If at first your media isn't completely fluidized, give it time as the buoyancy will slightly decrease as bacteria colonize it. However, in most cases it just takes some extra air to get it rolling. Technically, you're only supposed to need close to 1.4 liters of air per minute to fluidize a liter of this media, although you can overload a filter like this, so try and stick close to that 2 to 3 ratio of media to total volume to get the best effect. If you have the time, you can also pre-cycle your media so that you're adding a robust community of bacteria right off the bat. To do this, add your media to a small bucket or jug. Fill with dechlorinated tank water if you have some. This water will contain plenty of nitrifiers to get the process started. Add in an air stone and clamp it in place so it doesn't float up to the top. Add in some liquid ammonium chloride and try and achieve a concentration somewhere in the ballpark between 20 and 80 parts per million. Simply put, the more you add, the more bacteria can grow. Now there will be a limit to this regarding the surface area and the amount of media that you're cycling, but it's hard to go wrong here. Don't worry about overdoing it with the ammonia because in the lab we grow these bacteria in concentrations well beyond 100 parts per million. I also like to add in a pinch or two of flake food to provide the bacteria with a source of phosphate which they also require for growth. 
Once the media is cycled completely, meaning ammonia and nitrite read zero, strain the media and then you can add it to your filter. This process can take between one to three weeks on average depending on multiple environmental conditions, the initial amount of bacteria, and the ammonia concentration you pick. No maintenance is required on this filter beyond removing and rinsing off the sponge every few weeks or as it's required. Hey thanks for watching guys, don't forget to subscribe and check out DIYAquapros.com for more projects, aquarium science, and aquatic life profile videos. We'll see you next time.